Hello, my name is Antonio Porras. I am an assistant professor at the Colorado School of Public Health, and I direct the research program of plastic and reconstructive surgery at Children's Hospital Colorado. I am here to talk to you about some of the work that our research team is doing to improve our understanding of craniofacial anomalies and our care for children with craniofacial conditions. Specifically, I would like to talk to you about a condition called craniosynostosis. And to understand craniosynostosis, one first needs to understand how the cranium of a baby develops after birth. When a child is born, the cranium is formed by different bone pieces that are separated by areas called sutures. This separation allows for the different bones to displace and grow to create space for a brain that is developing and gaining volume very quickly during the first years of life. Later in life, when the brain does not need more space, all the bone pieces fuse together. Craniosynostosis is a condition in which two or more cranial bones fuse together prematurely, which restricts brain growth. When two bones fuse too early at a suture, the brain, which is growing quickly, puts an increased pressure on the baby's cranium, and the bone pieces that have not fused yet start growing faster as a consequence of that pressure. This creates visible head malformations in these children. Craniosynostosis may be suspected when head malformations appear in a baby or young child. A diagnosis is usually made at a clinic after observing few sutures in computed tomography images. Once a child is diagnosed, surgical treatment is usually recommended with two main goals, removing the cranial and brain growth constraints and correcting the aesthetic malformations. Unfortunately, since acquiring medical images in children to quantify how patients develop after treatment usually requires radiation or sedation that can be harmful for them, no data were traditionally available to objectify the evaluation of the result of surgery. As a consequence, different surgical techniques are employed on different institutions, and the choice is very dependent on the subjective expertise and training of each surgeon. Not surprisingly, a large variability in outcomes has been reported during decades. Our team at the University of Colorado and Children's Hospital Colorado is working to objectify treatment evaluations with the goal of identifying the optimal surgery that needs to be done for each patient. And we are doing so by using new artificial intelligence technologies that are learning from large amounts of important data that our clinical team has been collecting for years at the Children's Craniofacial Clinic. First, we look at our historic images of thousands of patients who did not have a cranial condition, so our artificial intelligence methods could learn how the cranial bones and the head develop normally. This told us exactly what are the normal ranges of shape and volume for specific ages and sex. Once our computational methods learned about normal development, they could look at the image of a patient with craniosynostosis and automatically identify if the patient had any anomalies at any location of the head and if so, if those anomalies were produced by craniosynostosis. Importantly, our artificial intelligence can tell a surgeon how much volume a patient lacks or has in excess under every cranial bone. Our goal is to use this information to effectively plan surgical treatments that can be specifically tailored to the needs of every patient. In addition, our clinical team started using a new imaging modality called 3D photogrammetry that does not need the use of any radiation or sedation and that is completely safe in children. Hence, we are now able to take three-dimensional images of children after treatment every time they visit the doctor. This allows us to quantify and track how well the surgery went for our patients and how patients evolve as they continue growing. All these new tools and the knowledge that we are creating with it will facilitate the early identification of any problems that may arise using an objective, repeatable, and reproducible evaluation approach. But what is also exciting is that our new quantitative approach to patient evaluation is creating the information that we need to better understand how different surgical treatments at different stages of development can affect the growth of these children. So we can use this information to plan our treatments adequately so we can both choose the best treatment for every patient and prevent potential suboptimal outcomes. Our final goal is to make sure that craniosynostosis and other craniofacial conditions have the minimum possible impact in the life of our children and that they continue to have a happy normal life when they walk out of our hospital. If you want to learn more about our research program or our clinical approach to patients with craniofacial conditions, please give us a call or visit our website.